In today's video, we will take a look at my three most favorite cameras that can fit into a pocket. iPhone 11 Pro, DJI Osmo Pocket and GoPro Hero 8 Black. I started to appreciate this category of cameras a lot in the past year. There has been a lot of innovation when it comes to consumer cameras and a lot of them can shoot very nice stills and video. In this video, I will try to explain the similarities and differences between these cameras and maybe help you decide which one is the best choice for you. The shape or physical appearance of these devices is the first difference. iPhone 11 Pro is a smartphone, so there is not much to talk about there. When it comes to photography and filmmaking, the ergonomy of any smartphone is not great. There is no grip, but on the other hand, you probably carry it all the time, it has large display and it can obviously do a lot more than just shoot pictures or video. The build quality on 11 Pro is great. It is very premium, very solid and IP68 rated, so no complaints here. DJI Osmo Pocket is basically a small camera mounted on a gimbal with sufficiently large handle where all of the necessary stuff is stored. As the name suggests, it really fits into your pocket. Using it is actually quite pleasant. The grip is large enough, there are two physical buttons and you can also get the controller wheel. A disadvantage in comparison with smartphones is that even though it is very portable, it is still an extra thing that you need to carry around. The build quality is also pretty good. Despite that the lower part is made of plastics, it actually feels a bit premium. GoPro Hero 8 Black is a traditional action camera, but an upgrade in comparison with other recent action cameras is that it has integrated mount. Small dimensions are the main point of action cameras, so Hero 8 Black is very suitable for mounting and shooting in tight spaces. If you want to use it as a normal handheld camera, you will probably want to use something like GoPro Shorty Handle. It is definitely the most durable device out of these and therefore the most suitable for harsh environments. Another main difference are the type of shots that you can get out of these. 11 Pro has a big advantage here because it has three cameras. The main camera has usual 26mm full frame equivalent field of view and it is very suitable for all round use. Ultra wide camera is the latest addition to iPhones and I like it a lot. It has 13mm full frame equivalent field of view, so it is actually wider than GoPro. I use it much more than I anticipated, it provides very dramatic field of view and very decent image quality. 50mm standard or telephoto lens is still available on Pro models. It is obviously useful for objects that are far away, portraits or just for changing the perspective. Overall, iPhone 11 Pro is the most versatile camera out of these three. DJI Osmo Pocket uses 26mm full frame equivalent lens, so the field of view is the same as on 11 Pro's main camera. This is very versatile focal length, so as I have said, I approve of this choice. If you would like to shoot ultra wide with Osmo Pocket, you can use the new ultra wide lens by Freewell. Recent firmware update for Osmo Pocket even allows the lens to be attached whilst you are turning the camera on. It provides really good image quality, including the corners, so it is definitely a relevant option. Hero 8 has usual fisheye lens with ultra-wide field of view, but now it also has so-called digital lenses. You have the super view, wide and linear options. This is just digital image cropping of course, so the wider is the shot, the better is the image quality, but for most situations, the decrease of quality will not be visible unless you shoot in low light. Regarding the image quality, when it comes to stills, iPhone 11 Pro is the winner. The amount of detail that it can capture after the Deep Fusion update is pretty incredible considering that it is pretty tiny sensor. Especially the main camera shoots beautiful stills. Telephoto lens is still pretty good, although not as good as the main lens. The wide camera has the weakest image quality, but it makes up for that by providing dramatic field of view. Osmo Pocket is considered to be mainly a video camera, but it shoots great stills as well. The amount of details is also very good, and you can also extract a lot of information from DNG RAW files. Besides that, it can shoot automatic panorama shots, which is very useful, so I will give it a second place. GoPro Hero 8 also shoots nice stills, but it uses fisheye lens so there is a lot of distortion, which can be fixed if you use linear mode, but the stills are not quite up there with 11 Pro or Osmo Pocket. When it comes to video quality, that is where all three cameras excel 
and also why I decided to compare these. All three can shoot 4K video and 60p. iPhone 11 Pro shoots great 4K video with a lot of details. I only shoot video with Filmic Pro because all of my production is in 25p and the stock app can't shoot 25p. It also gives me 100 megabits per second bitrate. The difference in comparison with other two is that iPhone 11 Pro can shoot very nice HDR video. It captures a lot of dynamic range and it is very tastefully done most of the time. Osmo Pocket also shoots very nice 4K video, but it is a lot different. With the Osmo Pocket I always use DCNLI color setting because it provides cinematic look that is very suitable for post-production. In comparison with the iPhone, the colors are not so punchy, but the overall look is more cinematic or natural, so it is mostly a matter of preference. You can also use normal color setting, but I found that to be too oversharpened. GoPro Hero 8 in my opinion provides the most detailed video out of all action cameras at the moment. It seems like the new lens is a bit better and there might be a bit less distortion. I use medium sharpness setting for out of camera footage and I am happy with that as well. There is also an option to shoot in higher bitrate on Hero 8 which I use all the time. In that case it will shoot 100 megabits per second which captures more information for post production and it will help with scenes with a lot of movement. None of these cameras is particularly suitable for low light shooting. iPhone has night mode which works surprisingly well for stills. It combines long exposure and picture stacking. Low light video on 11 Pro and Osmo Pocket is similar, so not great, but ok for capturing something for social media. For serious low light shooting you need something with larger sensor. GoPro has darker f2.8 aperture so it won't let in as much light as the other two, but it is decent for an action camera. Overall all three cameras have great stills and video quality. iPhone is the best stills camera here. It also has the best HDR capabilities in both stills and video, which will be very useful especially for less advanced users. Osmo Pocket footage looks a bit more natural, which makes it very suitable for matching higher and mirrorless cameras. Hero 8 also moves away from that cheap action camera look, and I can say that there is an improvement over previous generations. The stabilization is one of the main focus areas of all three cameras. For me personally, the winner in this category is DJI Osmo Pocket. Not necessarily because of the effectivity of the stabilization, but mostly because it is a different type of stabilization. The gimbal on Osmo Action has many advantages. First of all you can choose from 4 modes. You have the follow mode, tilt lock mode, lock mode and FPV mode which follows all of your movements including the horizontal axis. That is basically the only mode available on 11 Pro and Hero 8. Unlike the other two, Osmo Pocket can keep the horizon leveled, which is a huge advantage. The weakness of Osmo Pocket is the walking. Just like any other 3-axis gimbal, it does not stabilize the Z-axis, so we will have to walk more carefully to get good results. You can also use the controller wheel for very precise gimbal movements, so that is a big advantage. Osmo Pocket also has very impressive object tracking. You can select the object to follow by double tapping on the screen. It will also detect the face in frame automatically and it will start tracking the person in the frame. It works extremely well after the last firmware update. I am very impressed by this and it is one of my most favorite features on Osmo Pocket. Another big advantage of Osmo Pocket is that you can control the gimbal remotely, so you can basically compose the shot using the smartphone app. Gimbal is also great for motion lapses and hyperlapses. You can set the waypoints and the gimbal will follow those. Hero 8 uses HyperSmooth 2.0 electronic image stabilization and the footage is really super stable as you can see. It works particularly well for walking. Hero was able to achieve the best results so far. Panning and holding the camera still is no problem at all, that looks great. The white and telephoto lens in iPhone 11 Pro both feature optical image stabilization. It works really well, it allows the camera to use longer shutter speeds and therefore improve the low light performance. It is also very important for the night mode. In video it combines optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization which works great. It is definitely more than sufficient for static shots and panning on the main camera. I was actually very impressed by how well it can smooth out walking, so big thumbs up for that. 
The stabilization on telephoto camera is good as well. Ultra wide lens has no optical image stabilization, but it uses very effective digital stabilization in video. Ultra wide footage is pretty easy to stabilize, so it looks very good. Regarding the autofocus, iPhone 11 Pro has great autofocus. It uses dual pixel system, it is very fast, very accurate and there is basically no hunting. Even the autofocus on telephoto lens is really good. The ultra wide lens has fixed autofocus because everything is in focus on that one all the time, so that is ok. DJI Osmo Pocket also uses the face detection, but it is not as fast as the iPhone. After the latest firmware update it works well, it doesn't hunt and it is accurate, just the speed when focusing from close distance to far distance is not as good as with the iPhone. Hero 8 has fixed focus because at that focal length and aperture everything is in focus all the time. Regarding the displays there is no competition here. 11 Pro uses new Super Retina XDR display and it just looks great. The brightness goes up to 800 nits in normal conditions and up to 1200 nits when viewing HDR content, so even when you are shooting in bright sunlight the visibility is not an issue. It also has great colors and contrast. The display on Hero 8 is the most disappointing thing about this device. It is small, not very bright and not very sharp, but still sufficient for framing the shots and changing the settings. Osmo Pocket has pretty small 1.08 inch screen, but they have still managed to make all of the settings accessible on that screen in a very convenient way. You can also set the exposure manually using that touch screen. Having said that, the screen is mostly usable for composing, it is a bit too small for judging the exposure, so we might want to connect it to your smartphone for more advanced shooting. Regarding the battery life, iPhone dominates here again. It has great battery life, watching 40 minute TV show will only take about 6% of the battery for example. Filmic Pro drains the battery a bit more, but you can still use the 11 Pro for a full day of shooting and consuming content or your vacation on a single charge. Despite the difference in capacity, the battery life on Osmo Pocket and Hero 8 is about the same. Osmo Pocket may actually last a little bit longer. That is probably because of the larger screen on GoPro and HyperSmooth 2.0 stabilization. Of course the possibility to change the battery on the go is a big advantage of the GoPro. Both can realistically shoot about 75 minutes of 4K video. To sum up, iPhone 11 Pro is the most versatile, the most premium and the most expensive device here. Besides a very good smartphone, it is also a very good camera. I'm actually surprised by the amount of details that it can capture in stills after Deep Fusion update. The video is probably even more impressive, especially if you use Filmic Pro. The main reason to buy the Osmo Pocket even if you have a high-end smartphone is in my opinion that gimbal. Gimbal allows you to get certain types of shots that are not possible to get with different types of cameras. It shoots great stills and video that is very suitable for matching with more high-end devices. It is pretty amazing that technology allows us to have a gimbal in the pocket and it is still one of my most favorite cameras overall. The main reason to get the GoPro Hero 8 Black is that it is a very durable camera that you can mount anywhere or take anywhere. It provides great image quality, it has very useful special features and excellent HyperSmooth 2.0 stabilization. These are very different devices so there can't be a winner here. I am just really glad that all three devices exist, all three have their strengths, and most importantly all three will give you new creative options which is probably the best thing that any camera can do. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share opinion please do so in the comment section and see you next time.